So we're going to call this new value now v RMS for the root mean square voltage. And this is just going to be our max voltage. So that was the peak of that oscillating function. And then we're going to divide it by root two. So you can verify that that's the same equation that we just found. So now in the problem here, electricity in A and Z is delivered at 240 and 50. So that means that the mains are at 240 volts that you plug all your appliances into, uh, and they operate at 50 hertz. So we won't be talking about 50 hertz that much at the present moment. Now, if you go traveling to North America and you bring something and you plug it in there, what you're going to be delivered is 120 volts. So uh, different systems. So if you use 240 volt AC power, what is the maximum voltage seen by the circuit? So the circuit is fed voltage from the mains, right? And that voltage is going to then drive the current through the circuit. And that voltage in an AC system, well, it's alternating. So it's going to alternate between the peak and the zero and then the negative peak. Uh, and it's going to do this, well, 50 times a second in Australia and New Zealand. Hertz means cycles per second. So 50 times every second, we'll have a peak and then back down and back up uh, through the zero. So what's the max voltage here? Well, we can say V is going to be this quantity up top. So that means that the 240, this is the rated RMS value. So putting the info into the equation, so 240 on the left, we're going to calculate the V max. We have this root two correction. So in order to calculate this, well, we'll multiply both sides by root two. So I can say V max equals root two times 240. Uh, so root two, 1.41 times 240, and this comes out to about 300 and 39 volts. So this means that the circuit, so whatever you plug in, in 39 volts, which averages out over time to 240 volts. Let's graph what this looks like. DC on the left and AC on the right. And we want to look at the waveforms for voltage and current. So first we'll look at voltage against time. And then on AC, same thing, voltage against time. So for DC, well, there's not much going on here. Your DC voltage probably remains constant or fairly close to constant. Now, actually, you are going to have some fluctuations. Uh, and so depending on the equipment, you may need to be aware that there could be fluctuations uh, in, the, in the provided voltage. Um, and then the value here, well, we just have one value if we have a V max. That's it. Uh, for AC, as we just saw, we have an oscillating circuit, or we have an oscillating waveform, and the Vmax now will be this value. And that value is different than And that value is different than the RMS. So this was 339 compared to 240. And the Vmax was 339.
So current is not a lot different. So current, I'll label I over time. Now for DC, bam, constant. And so we'll have here, you could call it a max or an average, but that'll be the same. Uh, and now, just a quick note, this I max is not the same as, as V max, right? This is different axes, different values. So whatever it is, I won't put numbers on here, but those are different. Okay, for AC, now what happens with the current? Well, if the voltage has uh, points where it's zero, so we have so we have these areas here and here and here and here where the voltage is zero because it's crossing the axis, right? It's a zero value. So we could put zero on the graph. So that means the current is also going to be zero at those points. So if I'm sketching this, well, I have a zero there and there and there. And now when the voltage is high, we could do a little calculation and figure out what the current is. So if voltage is high, current is also going to be high, not necessarily the same peak. So maybe I'll try to draw this one a little bit different. I missed, I'll give it another shot. Okay, and we also have an average value of current, and we would use the VRMS to calculate that average. Now, in my graph, these points should line up here. So if I have the same form in time, so these are called the nodes. Or the zeros. And the way that then the waveform is in phase. Now that also means then that you can have waveforms that are out of phase. So if I do another green one here. So this one has a slight offset, right? So this one is out of phase. You may have heard of three phase power, uh, and this is just saying when one is three phase power, where you actually have three waveforms kind of superimposed on top of each other, and that has added benefits. That the max goes up and only comes down a little bit, goes up, only comes down a little bit, and then the next phase kicks in. It goes up and only comes down a little bit. And that is how you would deliver more smooth AC power, meaning that you don't have the voltage drop all the way to zero because the next one that's just out of phase picks it up. in a circuit with AC power. So we've got in the middle here a phaser and this is going to rotate. So this is your rotating machinery. Uh, and we've got omega T here, the phaser rotation. And then we've got a plot over here of, in this case, current and voltage with respect to time. So let's have a start. Now we've already seen how these should look. So as the phaser rotates, current and voltage go through peaks, zeros, zero, peak, zero, negative peak. And now when it resets, let's look at the circuit here. So we've got an alternating current input here, so that's the circuit symbol. And for part of the cycle, the current's going in one direction and then it switches. So we've got clockwise for that part and then reset it and then counterclockwise for this part, right? And you can see that that corresponds to the part of the waveform that's either positive or negative is going to decide which way that current goes. 
So anything that is in the circuit, here's that's my source, my resistance is experiencing the load. Anything that's in the circuit is going to experience sort of forward current and reverse current, and it's going to happen really fast, right? 50 hertz is 50 cycles per second. So one cycle is forward back, and then that repeats 50 times in one second. So we can crank up the voltage and see how that affects things. And we can crank up the frequency. Is that what I want to do? That was down. This way is cranking up the voltage. And let's see what happens. So now delta V peaks at a higher rate. And then let's crank up the frequency too. And so the frequency is that cycles per second. So the phaser will spin faster and it will oscillate more times in either one second or more times in two pi radians.